Okay. Uh, JD Center of Art is delighted to collaborate with the India International Center to host this Meet the Artist program. We're delighted to have Radhika Dhuman, who's a friend also, and who's an award-winning architect, who'll speak on her mother, uh, the eminent artist, Rini Dhuman. But first, a little bit about GDCA. JD Center of Art is established by Jatin Das here, uh, and it is established to preserve and exhibit its large collection of folk, tribal, traditional, and contemporary art, all under one roof. It's currently under construction in Orissa, and we hope it will open in a year's time. The Meet the Artist program was started as an in-house program of the JDCA, where invited artists, craftspersons, or scholars share their work, experiences, and insights through an illustrated talk. Since 2001, 261 such Meet the Artist programs have taken place on the second Saturday of every month. Currently, our sessions are being held online since the last year and a half or more. Rini Dhumal is a prolific artist and printmaker. Professor Rini Dhumal is a prominent figure in the contemporary art world. She was a recipient of numerous awards, grants, and fellowships that propelled her onto the global platform. She's had numerous solo exhibitions to her credit in both India and abroad, and has participated in international, international uh, and national group exhibitions, workshops, and camps. She taught at the MS University Baroda as a professor in the painting department, faculty of fine arts. The Government of India Ministry of Culture organized a retrospective Mumbai, title as Shakti, that Radhika, her daughter and the speaker here today, designed and put up, and which actually just closed yesterday. So, and it was a beautiful exhibition, which I sadly missed, and I hope a lot of you who are there and those who have been in Bombay, if you've been able to see it. Radhika is an architect with a gold medal in design and has an MSc in architectural conservation from the Edinburgh College of Art in the UK. He's been awarded fellowship in 2012 and 13 as an outstanding person in the field of culture by the Ministry of Culture, Government of India. She has a vast experience in conservation of the UNESCO World Heritage properties in India and abroad, like Golden Fort of Jaisalmer, Baroda, Red Fort, and Champaner Pavagar Archaeological Park, a few of her sites of work and research. She's also been practicing mainstream architecture as a partner in principle um, at the architectural studio since 2004. She's a proprietor of the limited edition, which is a printmaking workshop. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong anywhere, Radhika. No worries, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> She's trained at the Management of Cultural Heritage and Heritage Impact Assessment, ICROM, Italy, and UNESCO's Wittrap, China. She's trained stone conservator uh, from ICROM, Italy, and a fellow at the Indian Institute of Architects and registered with the Council of Architects. She has been working as an expert on museums and heritage site management with the Ministry of Culture till recently. She lives and works in New Delhi, but she's currently in Baroda, where Riniji used to be. So over to Jatin Das. He and actually he'll have very different things to say because he and Riniji were very close friends, and this is very special for him. And I would imagine for you, Radhika, and for me, for all of us. Yeah. Uh -huh. Lot of our very close friends are gone. And Rini has passed away very recently. Rini and aunt and I and P.D. Dhubal, her husband, and Radhika's father and mother were very, very close friends. If they came to Delhi, if I went to Baroda, we uh, met up and spent wonderful time together having meals and drinks together. Now, Radhika, the only child of these parents, uh, three of them are artists. P.D. Thubal, I was, uh, uh, I had great admiration, and I still have, that Thubal does extraordinary wood engraving, which a lot of people in the country do not even know. And uh, he's not arrogant, but he, is stupid, uh, is, is stupid that he doesn't exhibit such extraordinary works. And I was so excited seeing his wonderful engravings. Rini, 
was not only a printmaker, he, she did innumerable platters, paintings, large and small. She was a, she was a worker. Uh, uh, because very few artists, those who work continuously all the time, not looking at and judging their work, own work. She and I have gone to innumerable artist camps in India and abroad. And she was a fantastic, affectionate person, very caring as a friend. Even if she was unwell, after a week, if she learned that there was an artist camp, she would join because some friends were there. Anyway, we miss Rini. It's unfortunate that I have not been able to go to see her exhibition at the National Gallery of Modern Art. And my daughter and other friends told me that it was beautifully mounted and very well done. It's a pity that I missed it. But um, the point is, many of us will go and many of us uh, have already gone. But this, is, this should be of concern to the country, to the art lovers, the critics, historian, the government, etc. That uh, in Lalit Kala Academy, National Gallery of Modern Art, in other museums in the country. There should be a museum in Baroda which should collect and acquire works of many of these artists and built up a collection uh, for posterity for future generation. Because private galleries will buy and sell it off to the private collectors that others will not get a chance to see. Having said that, it's wonderful to have to talk about Rini, uh, about her work, which Radhika is going to elaborate, and I'm going to butt in wherever required. Thank you, yeah. Radhika, for joining. Over to um, Radhika. Thank you all for joining, so many of you. And uh, I would like to thank uh, IIC for giving us and the JDCA uh, this platform um, to uh, get, get the artists to meet people online. And uh, it's a great program. Thank you for that. Um, I would personally like to thank, start by thanking Jatin Mama, who I lovingly call Jatin Das, uh, uh, Bidishadi, Nandita, and Siddharth, of course, for finally making this happen. Actually, it is meeting the artist's daughter, but my mother had promised Jatin Mama when she was alive that she would do this. But unfortunately, COVID had brought her brought this whole system down and uh, she was unable to do it alone by herself. And uh, she did always tell me that I have to do this, I have to do this, but it never got around to do it. So it is one I'm trying, I'm only here to tick off one of those unfinished uh, things to do that she had she has left behind and I'm picking up those and I hope I can uh, do justice to a uh, little bit justice to what she would have shared about her work and life. Uh, so I have prepared a presentation which basically is about some photographs about her life and uh, uh, if you know it, I've tried to select her works which uh, which visually at least are her transitional works between prints and the different mediums that she has worked on. And um, so I would request you all to uh, request that if he would like to start the presentation, please. Thank you. Yeah, her early years, uh, she was born in 1948. Uh, and uh, she was born in Itakumari and she had, uh, she grew up in this uh, uh, rural and uh, uh, rural land in places like Bombay because her father C.R. Das Gupta was uh, a person who was traveling and had uh, transferable jobs. So she grew up in both rural as well as uh, urban settings. And finally, next to that, uh, finally she joined the um, uh, uh, MSU where uh, she studied art uh, in the Maharaja Sayaji Rao University of Baroda and uh, she worked under, uh, I mean she, her teachers were uh, 
जोग लेकर सर मनीदा के जी सुब्रमण्यम शंको चौधरी ऑल स्टॉलवर्ट हैव बीन हर टीचर्स ऑल हर फ्रेंड्स नेक्स्ट इन दिस फोटोग्राफ विच हैज बीन आई थिंक टेकन बाय मोस्ट ऑफ दीज फोटोग्राफ्स इन ब्लैक एंड व्हाइट बीन टेकन बाय ज्योति भट्ट ऑल्सो हर टीचर एंड ही वॉज ही शेयर दीज अर्ली फोटोग्राफ्स विथ अस in the early 60s uh, 70s this is what she was there in bibing the you know the new ways of um, working art learning art and uh, she was exposed to a lot and um, the faculty of fine arts had uh, had fairs every year she would uh, work very hard and on various uh, ways of um uh, you know various mediums in which she could produce her art and uh, some of her classmates here uh, with joglekar sir are uh, mrinalini uh, whom we used to call vilumasi then uh, my father is here with uh, um with jyoti bhat firoz katpitia kaneria they all work together a lot and uh, as some of her friends next is uh, would always share that if we were told to make five she would make 50 sketches so that was her uh, gusto to learn and do do art uh, this is a you know, picture i find very funny personally because uh, i don't know if you both if you can guess the two one is uh, dilumasi and mahesh and you can go to the next slide that's them they worked a lot together and uh, uh, during uh, workshops during the fair uh, they spent a lot of time next please they also had a very good group of friends as my father always recalls dushant uh, dushant singh rathod nilima shekh my mother mrinalini my father they were all a big group of i mean they were a group of friends who were who spent all their time in the university and in the campus a lot and these were her, some of her early years that she spent learning art next please uh this uh, her sketches uh, Uh, these are some of her early sketches as student, and uh, the signature that you see over here actually are not hers, but uh, uh, it is KGS written there. Good and KGS. It's actually KG Subramaniam sign on these saying good. So these I just kept for uh, you know how she she was she was just obsessed with drawing, and that's why today's presentation I thought well what better than drawn to life? And she was actually drawing drawn to life and lived her life. quite with augusto next please so in the 1970s of course uh, for me highlight was that they, my parents got married uh, but she next please uh, she did go to uh, she got she won uh, the the french government uh, fellowship where she worked under uh, sw hater and um, uh, krishna reddy and uh, she worked Uh, in um, for almost one or two years she was in paris working she traveled a lot during that time she did print making this is a lithograph uh, this next piece next piece yeah these were some of the prints the speciality about uh, these prints next piece uh, was that uh, this was a new medium of viscosity which she learned there in paris and it was all about color and how to make the print in one run but multiple colors and multi plate and all sorts of different techniques of the new techniques of print making she picked up and learned with them next this is one of those uh, early canvases the earliest canvas we found it's a 4 by 4 feet canvas it was owned by uh, jyoti bhat artist jyoti bhat and uh, uh, he graciously donated it for uh, for our show i lent it and donated it finally to the ngma it's a 4 by 4 earliest canvas that we i have seen of my mom's next piece Uh, these are some of her uh, other works which she prepared in the 1970s next please in the 1980s is when she started doing her solos um, and uh, she made her own posters so for this presentation i have got all her posters out this particular one is she would do wood card social screen and make her own posters as a print that's how she was obsessed with print making and this is a wood card um she made next please in the 80s she did many such uh, explorations with different mediums with costume print making pastels and that's when she started moving from the abstract works that she used to do uh, to um, to more figurative 
Uh, this particular one in the center, the coal miner, is also part of the collection of the National Gallery of Modern Art. Next, please. This is a, these are the woodcut prints that she, these are all her, uh, uh, part of her exhibitions. Uh, we have a lot of her catalogs, which are still available with us in the estate that we are trying to prepare for her. Uh, next, please. Um, lithographs. She did this particular, uh, the one on the right hand side uh, is a label she had designed for the uh, Grover wine. Uh, next, please. These are the few posters again that she created for her own shows throughout in the 1980s. I think she, I think she did a solo every year from 1980s, I think if she missed out one year, two years, but she she worked like really night and day as Jatin Mama also knows and has shared with you. Uh, next please. She later in the 1980s had joined uh, the, the university, the graphic department as a visiting uh, lecturer, I think. And she used to work in the printmaking department, next please. Uh, so she used to do, carry out a lot of workshops where she would invite her uh, colleagues, friends, people who were doing new techniques. And she continued this until uh, she was professor as well. It was a way of intermingling and also bringing, uh, you know, the students and experts and artists and learning together. I think that's what she tried to do. And she used to really believe in demonstration. And she herself used to do a lot of demonstrations for her students. Next, please. In the 1990s, she, uh, when she, once she became the professor, she was working, she was teaching. Uh, she was also head of the, pro uh, next please. She was also head of uh, painting department and she practiced, I mean, she practiced art. She did a lot of paintings during that time, late 80s, 90s. Um, I think lesser prints, more paintings, but I don't know, I can't tell because we have uh, quite a few listed uh, works of hers and uh, she explored a lot, a lot from her imagery and this particular one is a four by four painting called Peace and Destruction again with in the collection of the NGMA which is uh, shown uh, and uh, next please. She used to, then that is when she started doing a lot of big um, canvases, mixed media next please. And again, back to prints. So I'm trying to just gather these images where you know she's still transforming from uh, her abstraction to her figurative, and how she finally next piece. Uh, she also loved doing things uh, like batik. She'll make scarves. She'll uh, uh, you know go and do um, the ceramic tiles and platters and she would, uh, so this is a vase in this particular room, it's still, uh, I mean, we've sent it for the show right now, but this is always here with us, which is, um, so she used to love painting on things. So that is how, even in the house, we have a lot of her works, which are you know, just stuck on this house. I mean, they are, they are, uh, they are in the bathroom, they are in the courtyard, they are everywhere next week. Next, please. She used to, as Jatima also said, that she used to really sketch a lot and she always did. And uh, this was one of these uh, series which she de did called uh, Dreams of Fantasies, which are these two small sketchbooks, but very, uh, very strong uh, black and white only, white paper and black, um, with black felt. She did these big thick sketchbooks, which we have. Um, some of the images are from there. Uh, in 90s, late 90s, next please. So when she was in the uh, university, uh, in when she was a teacher in the faculty, um, uh, they, they had ordered this very big uh, uh, etching press. And, um, uh, you know, everybody started wondering that, you know, who's going to do these very large prints that these they have come, uh, this very big etching press has been ordered for and how are we going to start doing this? And so my mother stepped in and she got these three and a half feet by three and a half, the largest possible uh, um, 
uh, linoleum and uh, wood wood blocks that she could find or source and uh, she made these series next please she made a series of almost 10 to 12 next uh, yes in color and black and white she made these humongous size uh, uh, lino and woodcut prints multiple multi 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 layered as well um which are very unique in nature um uh, because they, you have to cut the matrix again and again to make the color different so uh, she made these series of these uh, very large prints which i think are very unique and uh, uh dati mama please button whenever you want to you may know more about all these things next please uh she also had because she was so obsessed with working in so many materials somebody invited her to a glass factory so here i don't know if you're aware but uh, in baroda there is a, a glass factory called yera glass i think all of us have grown up with yera glass so they had a factory uh, where they could uh, bake the glass the cl- color on the glass so these are her exper- experimentation before she did this big workshop which i think mom was also a part of that workshop i remember is um, so the gold is the, the gold that you see are uh, what is the permanent baked in the glass and then she used uh, color from reverse side making it a glass painting and so these are things she would experiment with next please different techniques next uh in those years she did take a sabbatical uh for uh, sabbatical is a one year leave that the university gives to explore on your own techniques and art so she did that and she created the series of the ancestral tapestry where she thought felt the need to go back to her roots and uh, find out you know so she found a lot of photographs of her aunts and uh, how they lived she went back to ita kumari to see where her house was things like that it was it was a one year project and she came out with a limited edition book with 15 etchings color but all those etchings are also unique because they of course they tell her story about uh, the ancestral tapestry that she belongs to or what we belong to but also her uh, uh, technique in terms of her graphic techniques and all the mediums that have that she has used like like photo etching and she has used color viscosity so it's a set of 15 where she has represented the ancestral tapestry next please um these are just some photographs of her uh, doing print making next please in 2000 next please um she was obsessed with traveling uh, drawing traveling painting and she chucked her university job as a professor everybody told her that you know don't don't leave don't leave you know you have two years to finish she said no 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 my calling right now is that i need to paint i need to work i don't want to waste any more time i don't want to interfere with the young people who are coming into the faculty and let them take that is when she started exploring this form of devi and uh, she made this very large canvases uh, of devi this is uh, the kali uh, next please and this is called the empress of solitude this was shown in delhi as well uh, next please she also explored with uh, the ceramic next please you can just skim through these these are the different she also worked with the molela so in baroda uh, in the 2000s it was uh, from 2000 mid 2005 uh, to onwards um uh, there is a place called uttarayan which my father has set up for um the art collector and uh, mr rakesh agarwal so they continued to have these uh, workshops with not only contemporary artists and friends and um, colleagues but also traditional um, indigenous um, artists and uh, tribals so this was one of the workshops where she did a huge amount of and explored huge amount of uh, these uh, molela with molela artists she learned how to throw use terracotta she worked with terracotta next please similarly the bastar so this is a unique sculpture that uh, was created when the bastar uh, workshop was going on next please with the bastar technique these are some of her sculptures that she created next please 
this is a reverse uh, i mean this is a reverse painting in the sense that it's a glass painting uh, painted from the rear side on acrylic um, and she used to love doing that and that's why most of the time her signatures on this are in reverse as well because she signed first she signs and then she uh, paints so it was a technique she enjoyed a lot i think next this was one of her personal favorites it's a it's a devi but a late devi and she was very close to this painting she said it's very soft it is it was very dear to her so we had it in our family collection and uh, she uh, used to refer to this a lot uh, whenever she uh, painted next please so she also had gone to shantini ketan in the early 70s which um, i'm sorry i did not mention but uh, uh, she did uh, she did study under somnath hor for uh, uh, some time in shantini ketan and uh, that's where she picked up the bronze uh, relief uh, also and she, she he taught her print making but also taught her to use um, uh, various mediums in metal and she did a series of uh, she went to shantini ketan in the 2000s spent a lot of time there i think she was also awarded some scholarship from the university there and uh, she stayed there and she would love to go there and uh, spend time and uh, this a technique i think she had learned earlier from somnathur uh, but she went back to shantini ketan when she was free and uh, she would do uh, enamels she would do um, casting she would paint and uh, spend time there as well next please next please yeah so this one one more example of that next please uh any guesses but this is jatin mama and the rose kaka uh, very dear friends of hers next and i think their association almost 45 to 50 years of association with all her friends next please and um, i think it's best if jatin mama talks about it but they were all very close friends they also in 2000 traveled through china for 21 days um, which was documented by bidisha di uh in a very nice uh, film uh which was by jdca it was made by jdca and um uh, they traveled so they were all like a big family and very close even now are suppose um very close family like friends friends like family so uh it is um, she was a very 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 friendly person and made sure everybody was comfortable everybody was had enough to eat and you know enough material to paint with and was taken care of really well in baroda or if she was abroad as well next please um so she used when she used to sketch any place that she traveled because she did in the 2000s travel uh, hugely i think she traveled almost every part of this planet and she uh, would sketch so we have about 100 sketchbooks of hers uh, says burma 1 burma 2 then it says you know that kind of uh, uh, series of sketchbooks that she did and what we find is that she used to sketch and then those sketches in the in the day time wherever she would travel she would be sketchy and then she would come back and then make uh, imagery or painting sit down get up in the 4, 4 o'clock in the morning in the hotel make these images uh which were more finished like painting so her sketchbooks have sketches as well as uh paintings uh as well and uh then uh, uh for uh, for bali and for china she had we saw these books in china um which uh, were like a harmonica it was a, it would open up uh, in full but they were it was a sketchbook and uh, they all bought these sketchbooks and my mother took the biggest one and when she came back uh, re referring back to her sketchbooks she created this book uh, which was uh, printed as a limited edition book um, um as the full uh, travel log so these are the two travel logs that uh, she made and uh, also uh, published in limited edition next please 
so sh- these are the things uh, so these are this uh, the bali book the one you see with the ye- yellow cover they are uh, this she was uh, there are also etchings in it it's not a reproduction like just a reproduction or a four color printing but it is it has etchings that also has about 17 etchings um and the whole travel log about how she traveled what she felt what were the things she got this uh, the cover that you see of the um, of the book is also a fabric that she brought from there to make sure that she has that fabric for binding the book because she would also be very particular about how her book will be bound and then um, she would make portfolios for young collectors who can you know buy prints in prints together or that was her idea at least and she wanted that more people more and more people should have her work and um, you know be able to see her work and so she also created these um, you know, limited edition um, uh, portfolios in graphics next please i think nearing 2021 is when she passed away she she had uh, done a lot of work but she also was diagnosed next please of um, of um a lung disease and uh, uh, she suffered quite a bit from almost 2014 onwards she was uh, she knew that she was, she had this problem it is was a deteriorative de- degenerative disease and uh, uh, she even then she said no 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 i need to mo- work more and when corona came she was like oh my god i have no time i want to work more so she actually created a whole series of almost 120 works uh in the corona and she would get she had she was unwell but she wanted to paint and paint and paint more and uh, this is one of her largest uh, last paintings that she has signed off on called uh, peace on earth and i think that is what she wanted after the corona situation that was uh created and the fear we all had to live with and all that so this is uh, her last big canvas uh that she painted with i'm sure with great difficulty of course i wasn't here to see her paint this but she really loved this painting and she said she has called it peace on earth uh next please um so the series that she has painted i think everyone who is um, on social media must have seen a lot of these shakti images that are going around and um this was uh Uh, the last painting she made in september just before she passed away for my daughter who was born in september and she would always call her durga and durga was an image for my mother and my father also in his tribute uh, wrote about that you know durga was one form for her which was very close and it was all the time that is what was she was obsessed with and so this is the last painting gifted to her granddaughter uh, it's around canvas next please <coughs> next please uh so these are the series i'm talking about she just ordered these boxes yeah please skip to these are the series you can go on uh these cutthroats these are very large drawings that she made in this last final series of hers next please uh of the devi and uh, the nun story she has quite a few on the series of the nun story and she has all these imagery next please and uh, this is the travel jatin mam would you like to share any moments of your travel in china yeah yeah okay go on yeah. it was wonderful uh, mr uh, mr guy quad was also there the king of yeah. baroda went lovely uh, time we went to egypt we went to china we went to many art scans in india and overseas we worked together so mm. he could probably add later i think once you finish all right okay so next please um this is with her guru she was very close to manida and uh, um in fact she last in in 2000 onwards actually she uh, he lived right next door to my parents and uh, was father 
he was like a father figure grandfather to me and um, they were very 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 close all through their lives so my entire parents life i think uh, they were close and marida also was very very fond of them and this is i think is what uh, if i can just read it out working with such masters taught me to you uh, to use my hands and sync with my creative thoughts everything in my art is my own i use no dig- digital help and i do not employ any technology to embellish my art my art is pure my art is pristine really and so um um she learned a lot from him in, uh, always was guru uh, he was always her guru and uh, she respected of course till the very last day uh, next please so about shakti finally what happened was probably she was very stressed in 2000 uh, uh 21 because she had got this date called december in december 2021 and uh, um because of the corona initially it was planned much earlier but it was not supposed to be a retrospective it was supposed to be a painting of you know probably her few paintings or something like that i don't know whatever she had discussed with uh, the ngma and um then once she passed away and it was one unfinished thing that we as family had to put together in a very short time and uh, we tried our best more for a tribute uh, to her uh, than uh, but it did become a retrospective which of course had much more working to do but it her story her art her art form everything i mean whoever was a part of the um the ngma as well as uh, as well as uh, her uh, in terms of you know she always believed that there is a team and we all work together so she had actually formed a team in 2018 to start working on something which probably is a retrospective but a show of a very grand scale and she worked for it then when corona came she was very upset that this is never going to happen in my lifetime and etc etc but uh, anyways so unfortunate that she passed away just before this exhibition um but i want to read a piece out of um uh, dg ngma shri advait gadnayak he has written uh, of how her story fit into this whole amrit mahotsav which india is celebrating and was a show which represented the women um women um the country um and artists i think uh, it was a representative of all forms and so i'm just going to read what he has written as the curator of this uh, exhibition and his opening statement of what his curatorial note says is india is an old civilization and a young nation the, the generation of artists that came away in the heady years after the country Have I been heard? Radhika, you suddenly uh, we lost your sound. Yeah, I'm going to start again. The quote. Yeah. yeah, India is an old civilization and a young nation. The generation of artists that came of age in a in the heady years after the country gained independence seem to know this intuitively. In the work of many of these towering giants, you can see reflections of this duality. they drew on new ideas even while being rooted in indigenous art and tradition art tradition sorry vini kumal is one of them this retrospective will provide a chance to evaluate her unrestrained and distinctive body of work and place her in the galaxy of distinguished artists exhibited by ngma um and now you can continue with the next one Can you hear me? Yeah. Quotation closed.
everything is very enough. But the basically when the when with when they be posted was I, I think we've uh, Radhika's network has probably gone off. Uh, she's got very bad network in Baroda where she is. Uh, so we'll try and wait for her. Otherwise, I will just take you through uh, this uh, while she joins in. This is the exhibition that she was talking about, the retrospective at the National Gallery of Modern Art in Mumbai, which just um, finished. And this was what was Jinidi's dream uh, to kind of put up the large exhibition. Um, let me just see if she's able to join in. And in the meantime, I'll just take you through the slides. The exhibition spanned the entire, uh, the entire spatial gamut of NGMA Mumbai. They've recreated her studio back in Baroda. Thanks, Siddharth. I think, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's okay. Did you play the little video? Yes, I did. Yeah. Oh, right, I'm okay. just taking them through the. Yeah, I think slide. this is, uh, yeah. Uh, Sorry about that. I wish Dubal was also in the audience today at this program. You know, Rini and Dhumal, husband and wife, <laughs> they're lovely people, very, both are dear friends, but they are totally different. <laughs> totally, totally. And that's the beauty of that couple. That uh, Dhumal uh, will work quietly. Nobody knows Dhumal's work. Rini will exhibit and show and work continuously, day and night. But she was one of the few artists who imbibed from the tradition. Her imagery, her subjects, her treatment, everything. Because I think she, uh, she, she's a Bengali, comes from a rural Bengal, and then evolved. But she was also very lucky to have teachers like Bani, then Shankhuda, and many and Bendre, and all these people. And that was a period where Roda was evolving and was vibrant. At that time, Sir Jaja School of Art was diminishing and Baroda was rising. And many, many artists who studied there. So Rini is one of them who studied and taught there and continued working. You see, in a, in a particular milieu in which there were many artists, in, in Bombay there are not many anymore. In Delhi there are many, but Baroda has a, uh, Baroda has a different give and take and sharing and people had sympathy and concern for each other. So that's one thing very lovely. And uh, I missed the show, but now as I'm seeing the pictures of the NGMA in Bombay, they're beautifully hung, beautifully displayed, beautifully lit up. Normally some exhibitions that lit up like a sari shop, but here it was very gently lit up on the lights only on the works. Rini and I, as I said, that many of us went to, uh, went to many artist camps in India and overseas. She will be talking and working. She will be talking and sketching. And uh, it was wonderful. Uh, now, uh, Radhika has to carry the cross. 
how far of really. You know, when I go to Baroda in their house, the house itself is very vibrant. There are miniatures, there are pichwais, there are beautiful wood carvings, platters, and the lovely food. I remember I attended Radhika's wedding also. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Baroda. And I did a portrait sketch of Dumal as well as a watercolor of Rini. And I called her a gypsy, uh, you know. So she was extraordinary. She, she had no enemies. She was friendly with everybody. She was very pleasant and a good worker. Very good, very good. She tried almost every medium. Now, as as uh, uh, Radhika was mentioning about haters, in a gallery descent, gallery 17, Studio 17 um, in Paris, where Fisher already also had worked. And I had gone there in 1971 when I was representing in the Paris Biennale, and also thereafter. So that was a lovely time. It was a lovely time everywhere in the world, and suddenly. Suddenly, it's become isolated. And any artists who are doing anything with, with or without an invitation, without a phone call, everybody will be there for each other. That, uh, so really. <laughs> Radhika, please continue. Yeah. Can you hear me? To that? Yeah, yeah, we can hear you. Yeah. Okay, yeah. you can go to so this was the uh, the studio recreated. We transported her entire studio with etching press and everything from 14th Anoshia Society Baroda to the NGMM Mumbai, her last palette, her color, colors, uh, all her unfinished um, canvases. Her last painting, I think, mean, as is, her studio was uh, remounted in NGMA, Mumbai. Next, please. You know, the next slide. I think there's just one or two slides more. Yeah, next, please. So these were her paintings and next, please. This was the part where in the whole curation, uh, we had um, um, uh, sir had uh, planned that you know we can uh, have from her uh, all her mediums right going up when they go to the dome and there is these devis. So we actually have uh, more than fifty nine devis, um, devi images from her entire series uh, mounted here. Uh, and it uh, the normal uh, whatever we have registered as if a child who cannot speak and talk they go see everything but by the time they go up they you know want to cry because they feel the pressure so much i think but it is uh, the, uh, we try to get the best of the devi series in um, in this dome and uh, many people like brinda even nanta when they went i have said this is the first time ever that in ngma the dome has been rightly lit and um, you know we can actually feel the energy of this space with these entire series of uh, mars works next please uh, there have been more than 25000 visitors and uh, these are this is just a photograph uh, of uh, um, honorable minister of culture who also specially visited this exhibition just for a day and saw and enjoyed the show. Next, please. But total, as we say, ticket sales were more, over 25,000 in the past four and a half months. Uh, there are three books uh, which um, talk about her work. One is The Rooted Landscapes, The Art of Rini Dumal. Next, please. The other one is Drawn to Life, where uh, uh, she, uh, her sketchbooks um, 
and uh, her drawings and uh, her travelogues they are all in this book next please and these are this is the one called parallel wings art of vijayamal again where talks about uh, all her different various mediums that she explored over the years and years of art practice next please and uh, when she passed in uh, on 8th of september 2021 and uh, she suddenly i mean we were all in a shock but then uh, in one or two days after we uh, came back home and we went up to her studio this is what was her last painting waiting there this is what was the image and i took that photo this is a photo of then just after she passed away and uh, as if she was maybe just start coming and painting and uh, working again and yeah. i'm sure that she is now free to paint the skies and uh, reunited uh, you know and with her babies so this is the last slide i think and that there is another one no so that next one is there anyone i think that's the end thank you very much for being so patient and uh, um i think siddharth any any other questions or can you hear me again last two hey ha go yeah can you hear radhika me? yeah yeah when ridi worked did dhumal make any comment about her work <laughs> tell me he should have been present in this eh? <laughs> sorry i was telling siddharth that you're going to ask me very tough questions and yes of course he was in was very tough question they were very honest <laughs> yeah yeah he did for everything that she painted whether it was good or bad uh he had comment for every work that she did i think but he never really interfered in that sense but uh, in the end uh, she because she had this problem with her arms i think she could not produce the kind of work she did in her uh, uh, entire series of like the late 90s 2000s she was prolific prolific painting yeah, yeah. um and uh, so whatever he loved those paintings fortunately we he insisted to keep in fact he even fought with uh, one or two galleries who wanted to sell the paintings and they said no 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 you i am going to pay, uh, keep the painting i'll buy it from you if you like uh, <laughs> but yeah. he was so critical but he loved her work so much that he made sure that from every show uh he kept the best works and i think uh, uh i think that is that that has helped us a lot because now at least we have some of her um best works of her ex from her uh, various exhibitions that she has done and i think uh that's good thinking of my father <laughs> but yeah he did criticize he did keep telling her in the end that you know just chill relax don't need to paint you know in the end uh, i mean if you can't paint it's okay but uh, she was painting till the last hour i think she was painting till the last hour yeah. and uh, and um, yeah she had, everything was ready for her to paint and you know so she did work as much but in the last day when i met her in the hospital did she did say that now i can't paint anymore i think and that is the day she died she passed yeah she was a workaholic yeah. she worked all the time all the time even as sari will get spoiled with the colors etc she won't be bothered yeah mm -hmm. see uh, it is uh, extraordinary that many of these people are gone you know and there are very few friends left where <laughs> you can speak your mind and yet you don't become enemies and you remain friends <laughs> you differ you disagree you fight you argue and with mutual affection and respect that is a kind of there yeah. are things that we had which are missing yeah and that is probably the friendship that my parents shared as well sometimes it would get a lot but 
uh, Baroda had that culture of disagreeing, but That's still right. being friends. Yeah. Uh, Unlike Bombay and Delhi, Baroda, yeah. etc., is a small town which has a tradition, which has yeah. a culture. And then UIMS University also has a tradition and culture. So yes. both are combined. Yes. I mean, my youngest son has gone to study there. But your, your Rini's time was totally different. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Like my time in JJ was different than today. You know? Mm. If you went for excursion, you know, or for a trip, you come back with 50 watercolor uh, landscapes and about mm. three, four hundred sketches, you know. So that's, uh, you know. Mm. Uh, so, really, well, you see, one thing very important that really came from a traditional background and she carried on her work had a rich rooted Indianness. You know? Yeah. That was another thing very special. Yeah. And 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 her uh, uh, recollection, her memory and her uh, imagery, they all came from all that. Yeah. Yeah. And you were very lucky that you have parents like uh, that. I... Yeah. But at the same time, you have to carry the cross down, you know, as I <laughs> no, said. No, 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 that's a lot of pressure for me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, meaning especially those parents who are very bright and very good in their work, you have to also pull up your socks, <laughs> you know. In my own work, yes, uh, but yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, that's very good. I don't know. I mean, it is has been a tough year for us because Ma did go very suddenly, and uh, we have been struggling. But I think I hope everyone enjoyed today's uh, little glimpse yeah, of yeah. Rini, and uh, I hope that it was maybe maybe we should talk to Dhubal and make a little gallery of your own of uh, Rini and Dhubal both. Yeah, both their works. <laughs> Nice. You, have, you have already done Jatinda. No, center not multi No, no. GD Center of Art is different. I'm talking about in our country, say Souza and Gaitondes, there could be a gallery in Goa. Are you with me in what I'm saying? And not a big multi museum. I'm not talking of that. Yeah. But a smaller gallery, permanent gallery, permanent museum where all their works, their studio work and their, you know, process of work, everything is displayed. And it's not only to perpetuate their memory, but it's also for future generation to learn and adhere to ethics and, you know, hard work yes. Yes. for that. Yes. Tell me. Yes, we will, we will definitely do something. We are, uh, uh, we are still trying to cope with uh, the retrospective and the... Uh, no, no, KG Subramaniam's house is broken down. You know? Yeah, yeah, his house is broken down. So, but what I'm saying, there could be, there could be, your 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 husband is also an architect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. People can do something, yeah. Are we off the public uh, platform now? No, no, we're not. Everyone's... Oh, we're not. <laughs> Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. No, no, we will. We will so, definitely so, try yeah. and do something. But uh, uh, yeah, we are looking in for ideas about uh, uh, developing an estate and uh, uh, the wide uh, work and the legacy that Rini and Dumal together have left behind. And uh, we would love, we would encourage people to give us ideas and see what um, must be done. But I, I hope everyone enjoyed this uh, presentation and. Uh, yeah, we will keep you posted. Maybe yeah. it will be, uh, yeah, another, we'll also open it up another to, little uh, talk. We'll also open it up to any questions if there are, Radhika. Just to kind okay. of find out yeah, if yeah. there's anyone yeah. who has yeah. any things to ask of you about doing these work or, you know, the association yeah, sure. they had. And I mean, there's a bunch mm -hmm. of people here. I don't know if they would, including your aunt, uh, Sanchita, who I met in a different platform. <laughs> and Ashok Chatterjee <laughs> and... So there are lots of people. I don't know if anyone uh, wants to ask anything. Please go ahead. There's Nandita also there. <laughs> yeah. 
Sorry, I was working and I joined late, Radhika. I'm in the car, so not switching on the camera. But oh, the retrospective that you put together, I heard my father say that you're very lucky to have parents like that. They were also very lucky to have you as a daughter. So thanks, thanks. <laughs> well, the exhibition that you put together was absolutely phenomenal. It's a very, very sort of deep memory in my mind and it will always remain. So thank you. Well, I luckily, I must say this, that the credit is not only, uh, I mean, credit is all my mother's because she had written down everything before she passed and that were the notes that actually helped us wow. uh, and the NGMA to curate this exhibition. Uh, of course, something like this, uh, Nanita, is, it has, there's a big team involved and fortunately because my parents are teachers, professors, whatever, they had these awesome students who <laughs> stepped in in this very hour of grief where I had given up I said well now she's gone what's the point you know like that and they, everybody was encouraging and said no 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 no. we have to do this for Rini ma'am and they all stepped in and uh, uh, stood by us like rocks like really Vilas Shinde, Vijay Bagodi they are all very important artists as well but they took out time for my mother and this exhibition Sanjana and um, uh, Jayanti, they all did and um, my father himself I mean he was grieving himself but he is the one who knew my mother's work right from when she joined college to yeah. right till the end and that is I think uh, a learning that uh, I would not I would have totally missed uh, if we hadn't done this whole exercise of you know because he exactly knew that in this year, this is the medium she explored and in this year, this is what she was doing and so and so and so. That was a huge help and uh, uh, it is it it takes a lot, a lot of people and of course, one very special person whose uh, movie you must have seen who created this whole Shakti, the brand, the logo. She was also my parents' student, Sangeeta Purohit and uh, she was, she is an anchor like she did everything from designing the catalog to pushing the images. And so what I'm trying to say is that it is the students and, uh, um, you know, it is, it's much bigger than it's not only I know the, the family that she created or the team that she had set up all before she passed. I think that is what was uh, important for uh, this show to be a success like this. Um, are there anyone else uh, who'd like to ask? I have a question and yes. I mean, I've just been uh, listening to this talk, which is very lovingly put together. First of all, thank you for allowing me to be part of it. Uh, but as a person who's just an observer and a lover of Indian art, when you're a child of parents who clearly seem to be so talented in their own spheres and um, unconventional, quote unquote, what is it like? to be in the home environment, does it have its sort of spillover effect on the way the house is run or uh, the food is cooked on the table? Do you see nuances of their creativity emanating in what they create, how they look, how they, you know, you grow up. Could you share some personal um, sort of anecdotes of growing up in a home like that? I think today, uh, even Nandita and Siddharth will be <laughs> to join me and feel what uh, we feel. Of course, I think uh, we are blessed to be uh, born to artists who work like this crazy artists and, you know, philosophy and philosophers and thinkers. Uh, I think there are, uh, it is very special now. I feel that, you know, it, 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 I am a different person altogether. So the, uh, it is extremely liberating to be growing up in a house with artists. Yeah. Of course, yeah. that lent us, and I think all three of us will agree with that. Ki chalo, kuch bhi ban jao, par artist nahi ban. <laughs> Liberation to that level. You agree with me, Siddharth? <laughs> yeah, I, no, I, I think it's. Uh, I think being an artist today is very different from being an artist at that time. You know, I think it was such a difficult journey to have chosen. Yeah, and yeah, I think that kind of bohemian spirit of that era and that age, you know, <laughs> for them to be, I think, yeah. yeah. 
but yeah. there's one thing which i uh, personally learned over this past year since passing her uh, passing is that the commitment the grit the honesty to towards her own work keeping in mind that there is a family there are children there are students her you know her whole commitment and grit that she wants to she would get up at 4 in the morning she would work for 2 hours even if she ha- had a busy day in college she would uh, still you know plan that she would work every day for 2 hours wherever she was so i think that sort of a grit towards uh, your own personal work um, is something that i really appreciate today that my mother did and i saw her doing it and i think that keeps me going in a big way and um, of course food is very important um i think all artists are great cooks including jatin mama my mother also was a great cook great cook my father too uh they had they would there was never a recipe which was re- repeated if she was cooking and uh, some which we have recorded and uh, uh, some very special like fish or river prawns or, you know we always had very special meals um and um yeah that that i miss because i did not take after that i can't cook like the way they do uh but um it is extremely liberating i think we are more open people we are uh, creative obviously opinionated and uh, but i think what we learn is uh, a lot i mean i i remember traveling with her uh, even as a child i would go to graphic print making workshops and i think that is how we all are uh, we are like family because uh, you know we we have this parallel family of artists family you know there are so many of us yeah. who met at every summer camp we were traveling together there were uh, you know workshops happening so we were pulled through the uh, hours and hours of seeing museums and things like that which probably at that small age i wasn't but now at least i can tell her yeah, yeah, yeah i have seen the van goghs i vaguely <laughs> remember but i have seen them <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah so but you don't forget and i think it is um, very fortunate that i i had this exposure and my mother uh, sort of uh took me everywhere like she was not scared that what people will think if a child was coming along or whatever if she was uh she thought that you know it's okay i mean she can be a part and uh, i i had the good fortune of being with her a lot uh except this last 2 3 years in corona where i i really regret that i wasn't around but uh, yeah she was always around like when even when i in, when i went for my professional course she came to visit me in rome even though she was not in good health but she went for some workshop and made sure she got me mangoes and so food and you know she was a very enthusiastic person and uh yeah that is how it has been like completely uh enriching every every conversation if i was working on a site i recently finished uh, this project in kashi uh in banaras and she would send me she has a great collection of books she would read a lot so she has herself got a lot a lot of books on various various subjects and so she would send me a whole lot of books from banaras and you know that way that is what uh, being a child of an artist is that they have so much to give so yeah. much knowledge to share yeah. uh it's not only you know if they can't give it to they know okay fine i've seen this somewhere you know you'll find it here or um yeah i think it is uh, extremely lucky to yeah i suppose that uh, being an artist intrinsically you have to see the world with very different eyes yes. than most normal people would and you know therefore you have to have a mind which is all, all the time work picking i i'm yeah. assuming i'm assuming that that's how they they are because they don't see it like you and i would i mean i would at least you yeah. know they, they see it in a just if i may say in a slightly distorted version from the normal but i mean maybe a different version is a bit is a nice word yeah. so yeah i suppose they have a very inquiring mind and they probably transfer that to the children too they i think you... fearless as well i think fearless mm. is a very mm. important character in so, uh in the upbringing i think yeah true true wonderful mm. thank you thank you anyone she else she took aman as well no radhi ha she took aman as well to the 
uh, workshops. Yeah. Some of the workshops. She took Amal. Amal. Yes, yes. My my child also she would take to the workshop. <laughs> yes, you're right. You're right. <laughs> If there's anyone else who has any questions or has any memories or things they would want to share, please go ahead. Sanchita, do you want to say anything else? Yeah, we uh, actually, we uh, from a mother's side, we came from a um, Jam Zamindar family in uh, Bengal, uh, which is uh, was East Bengal then. And uh, my ma our mama, the, my mother's, and uh, brother was an artist too. And uh, um, we always said somehow there were, must have been some artistic tradition that was passed on genetically. You know, so um, we had a huge uh, palatial building there, which my grandfather uh, owned. And uh, Somehow we feel that that artistic uh, tradition passed on from that side. Yeah, that's all I want to say. Thank you. Anybody else? Anybody else? Oh, Radhika, if you also want to say something else. Then. I just want to thank everyone. <laughs> it's been very nice. There was three other people <laughs> in Baroda. So, thank you. And uh, if there are any other questions, please do ask or we will uh, wrap this up thank you everyone thank you radhika very much for having this and thank uh, you i realized that it was uh, it was a tough thing because in being in baroda and with the network and i'm glad it all worked out and i'm glad you Definitely. could do this and also because baba has been very keen that this happens for a long time so yes yes <laughs> yes i'm glad this has happened thank you and i hope that you know when the jd center art opens you know, there'll be something lovely as a memory, you know, there. And I, I don't know, did Riniti visit or? I'm not sure. I don't know if she did. Baba would know. No. Baba. Yeah, Can you ask Baba? Okay. So, yeah. I so, don't think she saw the building up. I don't think she saw the structure. Okay. Maybe earlier she went. Yeah. Oh. yeah. Anyway, we'll let yeah. you know. <laughs> So, yeah, so keep up the legacy. Yeah. <laughs> good, very good. Thank you. We're very proud of thank Radhi you. also. Hello. Sorry? Thank you. Thank very you. Very proud of Radhi also. Of course. <laughs> very, so much she's achieved. Thank you, Mahi. Thank you. Thank you. Lovely everyone. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Asanama. See you soon. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks, Siddharth. Thank you. Thanks, Radhi. And see you everyone on every second Saturday of the month with the Meet the Artist. And we hope there'll be many of you who will be able to join again. And once again, thanks, Radhika. Thank you.